Greetings, Tinaya. I wanted a career in software development. That's all I wanted. That's, that was my passion. Like, I, I, I am still very much a software developer. And my CV was for a typical graduate who wanted to be a software developer. Job hunting for VAC work and internships during university was very easy. It was nothing compared to job hunting for a permanent position as a foreigner. That, that was horrible. Those were the dark ages. Ninety-nine percent of the companies I applied to did not even bother replying because I was a foreigner. It is the worst catch-22 ever. To get a to get a work permit, it is very useful to have a job offer, and to get a job offer, they want a work permit. Why do you guys do this to us? <laughs> Despite the hardships, I had a couple of nice offers. The lowest of which was about two hundred and sixty thousand rands a year. But they were very reluctant when it came to helping me with my visa process. Um, see, the thing with the, with the visa process is you kind of need documents from your company to help you out uh, and if they're not willing to do that, it makes life a bit harder. Not only that, but a lot of them didn't have flexible starting dates and if you're applying from Zim, you need flexible starting dates because your visa would take anywhere from four to eight months to come out. If only I was from a first world country where it takes literally two to three weeks to come out. But you know, that's a story for another day. Applying for a visa for me at that time was very expensive because the visa application process itself was expensive and my fees weren't paid up. So I had to raise money for that too. And without my, you know, my fees paid up, I can't even start the visa application process. So, you know, I needed a company that would help me as much as possible when it came to the visa. And then, during my last week of university, you know, doing that thesis, about to submit, along came an offer for a job position I never knew existed, literally. And it required two of my very weakest skills in my whole degree. That's networking and Linux sys administration. I mean, we had courses in these things, but like, it was never like, as a software developer, I never needed to know those things, at least to the level of detail that I needed to know them for that job role. The salary was kind of decent, but but best of all, this company was going to help me with my visa process. They were going to pay for everything and they're going to hire an immigration agency to help me with all that stuff. Let's pause and dissect my story there for a bit. At first, I had a passion, right? I wanted to be a software developer. That's all I wanted. That's I really enjoyed being a software developer. I still do, actually. I was good at it. It's something I wanted to turn into a career. My career choices during university and after university were all towards chasing that passion. My goal was to get a job within the industry of my passion. This is the approach that most people use when they're chasing a career. They try to think of a career that's closest to what they enjoy doing the most and then just try to carve out a career out of that. Unfortunately, unless if you come from a very rich family or if you live in a country with an awesome economy where all careers have equal opportunities. This approach to career selection is not uh, its not very practical. I actually came to this realization a very long time ago and as a result, I have changed the way I pursue my career. But you might be wondering, but James, that's literally the approach you just explained. Yes, you're right, but let me continue with my story. I started this new position and uh, it was quite foreign. I did not know what I was getting myself into. After three or so months of training and just onboarding, the job finally made sense to me. And as I spoke to more people within the company, people have been in my position and are now managers or other positions within the cloud space, I managed to carve out different career paths that I could take from the position that I was in as a grad at the time. So I decided to go all in. I chose a career path and I made a five-year plan. And I was just like, you know what, let's just go for it. Within months, I was really quite enjoying my job, actually. Surprisingly, because it's networking and Linux, things I did not like at all in university. But, you know, when you get paid to do something, somehow you enjoy it. <laughs> I was doing lots of extra studying, lots of upskilling. I was, it felt like I was back at university during test week, because I would work. And then after work, I would stay and study get home, study and do certifications and within a year I actually got promoted from graduate to associate to engineer, like level one engineer. And uh, like everything is going pretty well as, as far as my five year plan is concerned. Okay, so this time instead of pursuing a career that's within my passion, 
I saw a career. I analyzed it, it looked good, the numbers looked good, the growth was good and I decided to build my passion around that new career. This is how I've been making career decisions from the time I was in high school. In high school, when it was time to apply for universities, I did lots of research into what are the most paying careers. Not only good paying careers, but I also looked at the job growth, what you have to do to get to that position that pays really good. And that's how I came up with IT. I was like, you know what? IT is a massive space. It pays really good. And there's jobs pretty much everywhere. Let me go for IT. So applied for computer science degrees at universities in SA. Gave my parents the, you know, the, the application forms, whatever, the bill to pay fees. And they're like, no, <laughs> this is not engineering. What's this nonsense? So after a bit of more research, I came across electrical and computer engineering at UCT, which is um, an electrical engineering degree certified by SACWA, and it had all the courses from a computer science degree. It was literally like designed for me. Like it's like they knew that African parents exist. You can summarize this approach as chase money and bring a passion along with you. The sole purpose for working is to get money, is to get paid. If you don't work, you're not gonna get paid. If no one is paying you, you're not gonna work. If someone is not doing their job, you're not gonna pay them. When making career choices, your ability to get a job in that career should be top priority. And how much money you get paid in said career should be probably number two or three or something like that. And then your passion can come along. Trust me, if you get good at something, you're gonna enjoy doing it. So, you know, you need to consider when I graduate, can I even find a job with this career or do I have to do some other crazy shit before I can get to the job that I want? Uh, okay, it's actually quite dark now and wow, I am so red. Your ability to make good money in a career isn't only affected by how much a good position in that career pays. No, you also have to consider how easy it is to get to that position, if it's even possible, are there jobs when you finish your degree that will help you get to that position? How easy it is to get those jobs? Do they even pay a living wage? I acknowledge, I do acknowledge this approach does not work for everyone. Obviously, you know, certain careers require passion first. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure anything to do with medicine, you have to have passion before you can even think about it because I cannot imagine doing that stuff. I don't care how much money it pays. I am not going to operate on people. If you can have, if you have a good financial cushion or if you can afford to have someone else, you know, maintain your lifestyle, then you will have a lot more flexibility when it comes to choosing a career. But, you know, you have to think about your circumstances. You know, whoever is paying for your fees, would they be able to do that? Do they have to do that? Some people want to find their purpose in life through their jobs sharp i do not want my happiness to revolve around what i do for a living what i do to get paid because if something goes wrong there my whole life is a mess okay my face is red now because the sun is gone uh i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to like the video subscribe to my channel i'm so cold if you enjoyed the video make sure to like the video leave a comment wow i'm so red <laughs> if you enjoy the video it's cold here <laughs> If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click here because YouTube thinks you're going to like that video. If you watched that one, maybe check out this one here. If you've watched both these videos, click here to subscribe and I'll see you next week. Hopefully it won't be this cold next week. Oh. <clears throat>